Hello, Doctor. Hello. After meeting you during our last video, I became deeply interested in spinal disorders. I explored the Wordle Spine Hospital YouTube channel and found a great deal of information about various spinal conditions. I have prepared a few questions from a general patient's perspective. May I ask you? Yes, of course. Then I will start with my first question. In Wordle Spine Hospital's YouTube videos, I learned that the main cause of spinal stenosis is a thickened ligamentum flavum. I am curious, what role does the ligamentum flavum normally play in the spine? There is a ligament between each lumbar vertebra. The ligamentum flavum, located between these bones, stabilizes the spine and acts as a protective barrier. It firmly blocks harmful substances, especially those that can damage the nerves, from entering the spinal canal. When the lower back is injured, the ligament between the vertebrae tears. As it tears, bleeding occurs, inflammation develops, and over time the ligament becomes yellowish and thickened. At that point, we can recognize that the ligament has become pathologic and harmful. So what you are saying is that this ligamentum flavum is actually the main cause of spinal stenosis. Then I am curious, how was this identified clinically? In 1985, I was at Paris Descartes University, named by René Descartes, that said I think, therefore I am. At the Descartes School of Medicine, I visited the anatomy department where elderly individuals who had passed away were laid out, and medical students were performing dissections. At that time, I was in a doctoral program in Paris. While dissecting together with the students, I discovered for the first time that spinal nerve compression was not caused by enlarged bones, but by a thickened ligamentum flavum. So you personally confirmed this through dissection? Yes, exactly. Later, at Uppsala University in Sweden, Professor Wolfgang Rauschning developed frozen cadaver anatomy. When a person who has just passed away is rapidly frozen, the anatomical structures remain extremely clear, almost like those of a living person. When we dissected those frozen specimens, we found that what was compressing the nerves was not bone, not the spinal joints, and not the disc. It was the thickened ligamentum flavum. So Professor Rauschning discovered this anatomically, but I was the first to apply it directly to surgical treatment. You were the first? Yes, the very first. That is fascinating. In the past, treatment focused on cutting away spinal bone or disc tissue, even though the real problem was actually the ligamentum flavum. Exactly. When you carefully peel away and remove the ligamentum flavum, the nerve immediately comes back to life. It starts twitching like a fish. Under the microscope, you can clearly see the pulsation returning. The nerve that had been compressed immediately revives. But if the problem is the swollen ligamentum flavum, why not simply remove the thickened ligament? Would removing it cause other problems? A ligament is a structure that holds bone to bone together. Even a diseased ligament still plays a role in stabilizing the spine. If you remove the ligamentum flavum completely, the spine becomes unstable. When you move, the vertebrae can slip forward. When you bend forward or extend backward, they can slip in the opposite direction. When you are sitting or lying down, the spine is relatively stable, so symptoms may be minimal. But when you stand and move, the spine becomes unstable, leading to nerve pain and lower back pain. That is why, after removing the pathologic ligament, we stabilize the spine using an artificial ligament. Traditionally, when bone and joints are removed, surgeons insert screws and metal rods. This is the standard approach in the United States, Japan, most of Europe, and also in university hospitals in Korea. Korea generally considers American-style medicine as the standard, so American-style surgery is commonly performed. However, I studied in France. In France, surgeons use soft dynamic stabilization. With this type of soft artificial ligament, there is no need to insert metal screws. Simply wrapping it securely provides sufficient stabilization. So this is the artificial ligament. At first glance, it almost looks like the tip of a sneaker, which may feel unfamiliar to patients. What material is it made of, and what role does it play inside the body? This is an artificial fiber made of polyethylene. If you look closely, you can see that there are countless microscopic pores between the fibers. When this ligament is secured between the spinous processes, the patient's own ligament cells begin to grow into these pores within about three weeks. Eventually, the patient's tissue surrounds it completely, and it becomes the patient's own ligament. That is why patients who undergo spinal ligament reconstruction should avoid excessive strain during the first three weeks. Walking is fine, but bending and twisting should be avoided until after three weeks. I also noticed your initials on the artificial ligament package. 
This appears to be the actual box the ligament came in. Does that mean you personally developed it? Yes, I invented and developed it myself. You personally invented it? Is it fully patented? Yes, it is fully patented. It is called the SH Lee ligament because it stabilizes the spine in two directions, sagittal and horizontal. That is why it's named the SH Lee ligament. I filed patents in Korea, as well as in the United States and Europe. That is truly impressive. So you directly confirmed through anatomical studies that the cause of painful spinal stenosis is hypertrophy of the ligamentum flavum, and you personally developed this artificial ligament as a treatment based on that discovery. That is correct. Finally, who are the patients that truly need the surgery? Can elderly patients also undergo this procedure? Yes, they can. Surgeries developed in the United States, Europe, and Japan are very extensive. They require cutting bone, removing spinal joints, and even removing the anterior disc. As a result, the surgery itself is very large in scale. Even at the fastest, it takes about three hours. On average, it takes five to six hours. Because bone is cut, there is significant bleeding, so blood transfusions are usually required. Without transfusion, patients can go into shock. Typically, about three units of blood are transfused. Spinal ligament reconstruction is different. We do not cut bone. There is minimal bleeding. We do not remove the disc, and we do not manipulate the nerves. We simply enter between the vertebrae, precisely remove only the pathologic ligament, and then stabilize the spine using an artificial ligament. This is a soft and flexible stabilization. That flexibility is important because it also maintains stability in the segments above and below the treated area. Spinal ligament reconstruction is a treatment so remarkable that it allows patients aged 72 and older, even up to 100 years old, to walk again. It is a medical innovation worthy of the highest recognition. Hearing that you identified the anatomical cause with your own eyes and developed a treatment based on that discovery is truly astonishing and deeply moving. I also learned for the first time that this small but crucial structure, the ligamentum flavum, lies at the core of spinal stenosis. From a patient's perspective, it feels incredibly hopeful to know that there is a treatment that reconstructs the ligament itself to protect the spine. Based on an accurate understanding of the true cause, I sincerely hope that many more patients will regain their health through this innovative spinal ligament reconstruction surgery. Doctor, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us today.